Have you guys ever noticed the, what should I call it? The flatbread phenomenon? I see more and more of these restaurants that serve what I would just think of as pizza, but they call them flatbread. They charge three times as much as they would for a pizza, and I can't really tell what they are. What makes pizza pizza and flatbread flatbread? Is pizza flatbread? I actually don't know that. Let me know. Anyway, it got me wondering if in Italy, there's any sort of distinction between pizza and flatbread. Let's find out. Okay, so this is a classic example of what I'm talking about. This website has 11 quick and delicious Italian flatbread recipes that rival pizza. This looks like a very bad pizza. It does look like pizza, right? And uh, look at this. If you show me this spot, I will tell you, okay, it's a uh, pizza. See, it seems to me like as soon as they start adding like really fancy ingredients, like, okay, goat cheese, that's a classic. Balsamic vinegar, that's a total flatbread thing. And then they put on top something more extravagant than tomato sauce, they call it from pizza, it becomes flatbread. This says flatbreads are typically smaller with not so many toppings. If I start to count here, there are much more toppings than a normal uh, pizza. At least Italian pizza. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uno, due, tre, quattro, cinque, six ingredients on a pizza. Margherita is made tomato, cheese, and basil. Three. Oh, look, look at this. This is a, this, this is so flatbread. This is so flatbread. Peaches and arugula pesto. In Italy, they start to do things like that. But we call this uh, a pizza gourmet, which means... Uh, gourmet uh, pizza. Yes, a pizza that maybe has on top something a little bit more fancy. Okay, but it's still pizza, so you don't really have flatbread. No, Arpel, we have an Italian flatbread. You do? Si. But it's not like this? Eh, no, Arpel. Do you want to show me the real Italian flatbread? What I'm starting with today is the most classical Italian flatbread. Nowadays, there are people who use olive oil, there are people who use milk, people who use water, but we are sure that the most traditional one use always lard. There isn't a, preci a precise amount of water. We need as much water as we need to make our uh, dough. The dough at the end should be smooth and uh, silky. So this is definitely not pizza dough. No, this has nothing to do with pizza dough. This is another thing completely different. La Marzurka. What were you singing? I was singing the traditional song from the places where this flatbread is made. That is a mazurka. We let it rest for about 20-25 uh, minutes because it will be much much easier to spread and it can rest or at room temperature or in the fridge, it doesn't really matter. So this is the part where the bread becomes flat, I take it. See, Arthur, we need to spread it. Now, it shouldn't be perfectly round because, let's be honest, the round one that you can buy in a grocery shop, we all know in Italy that they are made not by hands. So to keep it uh, really homemade, we will make it a little bit, what do you say? Help me! A little uh, irregular. Irregular, bravo. 
Now, also about the thickness uh, in Italy, they don't really all agree. So, there are places in which it is very, very thin, and places in which it is a little bit more uh, thicker. I'm uh, for the thicker one, so I keep mine uh, like that. This kind of flat bread is traditionally cooked on a pot, on a sink that we call uh, piastra. Usually it needs to be like iron and uh, smooth. Here I don't have, so I'm going to cook it on a non-stick pan, but be sure that your non-stick pan is very hot. And then when it's hot, you reduce the heat just a little bit. It's very important also that you make some hole uh, in your uh, flat bread because he doesn't need to... You, you want it to stay flat. See, this <laughs> flat bread needs to stay flat. Oh, it smells good. See, Arper. Ooh. You can eat this uh, like that by itself, uh, or usually in Italy we also stuff it. This is one of the things that you can stuff with whatever you want. It can be some uh, grilled eggplants, grilled zucchini, cheese. Uh, usually one of the most traditional one is prosciutto cotto and mozzarella. But because here we are in America, I'm going to use cheese and ham. We would call it ham and cheese. Maybe cheese and ham, ham and cheese. No, the same. order is very important. Ham and then cheese. No one says cheese and ham, it's ham and cheese. Okay, now well, today I invented another thing. <laughs> cheese and ham. Well, I don't have any doubt about whether or not this is pizza, because it's definitely not pizza. It's not pizza, Arpier. This is the famous Piadina Romagnola. So it's from Rome? No, Romagnola is from Romagna. Oh, Romagna. Emilia Romagna. This is from Romagna. And it's considered over there the national bread of people from Romagna. It smells so good. And you wouldn't expect, I mean, it's just a very simple dough, but as soon as you put it on that pan, it smells so good in here, anyway. Now, as we said, there are several versions. There mm -hmm. is, for example, in Rimini, where they do much, much thinner. In Cesena, they do thicker, but no matter what, it's always amazing. From Rimini to Cesena to Imola to Forlì, wherever you are, you eat a piadina romagnola and you are in heaven. So, buon appetito! Arte, buon appetito. Ham and cheese is a universal, wonderful pair, isn't it? You really can be creative and put inside wherever you want, but prosciutto cotto and mozzarella is always some pasta. I know, people don't like eating lard. Man, it gives it a whole other taste. No, I don't understand because they don't want to eat lard. They eat butter, they eat olive oil, avocado oil. Lard is another fat. So if you go to Italy and you start asking around for flatbread, this is what you'll get. No, Arpir, you get this just in Romagna. Then, if you don't go to Romagna, you end up having some other stuff. Are you just making piadina again? Arpir, to a beginner high, this can look like a piadina, but it isn't a piadina. Here I'm going to use some olive oil and no lard for now. And well before we use water, this time I'm going to use some milk.
I assume it's the same deal with the milk as with the water and the piadina. You add as much as you need to get the texture you want? More or less. The texture that we are looking for is more or less the same of a piadina, which means soft, but not sticky. And now we let it rest for about 15-20 minutes. Now I'm going to knead the dough just a little bit more, to make it a little bit more uh, smoother. And now is the moment of lard. You need a little bit of lard and with a spoon, you need to be sure that all the flat bread is covered in lard. We can use a little bit more lard because we can spread the lard all around. At this moment, he became like a sort of snake. I was gonna say, your, your flatbread is not flat anymore. Wait, um, wait, Harper, wait. And then we need to roll it. It's like a cinnamon roll. No, Or Harper. a lard roll. Maybe a lard roll at this, time, at this stage, yes. Like piadina, also this kind of flat bread uh, you can be stuffed with whatever you want. This time I'm going with ricotta, pesto, and cherry tomatoes. Where's the balsamic vinaigrette no. drizzle? <laughs> no, that doesn't exist. That doesn't exist. That is too much fancy for my style. <laughs> There is never enough cheese. Now, I know that I'm going to stuff a flat bread, but believe me, this is amazing also with pasta. I believe that. It's amazing with trophy. <laughs> My cinnamon roll. Oh, not the buttons! Not my gumdrop button! It's not a cinnamon roll. It's a flat bread. Okay, before I dig into that, which I'm very excited for because pesto and ricotta are among my two favorite things in the world, I wanna just try the flatbread itself to see how it's different from the piadina. Mm. The way you spread the lard and then rolled it, it made it kind of, kind of flaky. And you know how it's called this? This is called Crescia sfogliata. Sfogliata actually means flaky. Yeah, it has that kind of, uh, what do you, like puff pastry almost kind of feel to it. This is Crescia sfogliata and it's traditional from the city of Urbino. This I've one, been there. 
I know that you've been there. That's an amazing place. It's an ama it's a wonderful. It's amazing. Place. It's all it's medieval. A, it's an unbelievable, beautiful place where they make this amazing flat bread that they call Crescia Spogliata. I almost forgot to mention the pepper too, which is amazing. They don't really know how this flat bread was born. But because there is a lot of pepper inside, because during the Renaissance or the medieval age, the pepper was a very expensive spice, mm -hmm. they think that it was a food for the nobility. So this is a, a royal flat bread. Buon bon appetito! appetito. <laughs> mm. Mm -mm -mm. Now this is a, a classical sauce also for pasta. Well, the flatbread really adds a lot to this. The pepperiness of it, the spiciness of it. The difference between the Crescia Spogliata in the Piedina is that this also by itself, it has its own, uh, how do you say, strong and the, the, the find the fine taste. You're right though, that to the untrained eye, even though this tastes completely different, it looks like a piadina. Do you have any flatbreads that are just totally, totally, utterly, completely bonkers and different? Yes, Arthur, but we have to leave Italy and go on an island. So this is bread? I know that it can seem a little bit strange, but believe me, trust the process. The people who invented this and who still make this, they know what they're doing. Now, after we mixed all our vegetables, our mix will become bread by adding some flour. Like before, we didn't have the real, the precise amount of water or, or milk. In this case, we don't have the precise amount of flour. We need to add it a little bit at the time to check the consistency that we want to reach. When I press it down, you can see some water still here, and we don't want the water in this kind of preparation, so we need some more flour. This is the consistency that we want to reach. Still a little bit uh, wet, but not wet with water. Wet with, uh, how you say, pastella? Ba ba butter? butter? It's butter? There's no butter in there. Not butter like butter in the fridge, the fat. Butter like uh, the things that you put and then fry. What? When you make, when you mix water and flour, Arper. Uh, and oh, it's, batter. Uh, that one. Batter, not butter. I didn't say butter like butter in the fridge. B -b butter B -b butter Leave it to Sardinia to do the weird one. It's not weird. It's weird for bread. It's mostly vegetables. They do 
that bread because it's called cocoi and cocoi in Sardinian language means bread with uh, squash and vegetables. All right, let's try this. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. That's the best one. That's the best one. I was going to the say the The vegetable same. one is the best one. I love piadina. I love crescia sfogliata. But how good is this? It's unbelievable. Like, I figured it'd be good, but I didn't figure it would be that good. You can eat this by itself. Because no it's kidding. A... It's delicious. Of course you can eat it by itself. You can eat also with some cheese, some pecorino cheese, some good prosciutto. That article said uh, it was like flatbread recipes that rival pizza. This is the one that actually rivals pizza. This is so delicious. I know because it's... It, I, I know, it's strange. Nobody can think that some squash, some zucchini... Chai... If you gave this to anyone, they would never guess that this is mostly vegetables. It tastes so rich. I mean, frankly, it tastes like junk food. It tastes like it tastes like there's probably a lot of like really yummy but unhealthy things in it. In fact, if I had to guess which one had lard in it, I would guess this one. It's like so crispy and like it feels oh, it feels fatty, but it, there's there's like a tiny bit of olive oil in it. So I really think that if someone has problem of eating vegetables, this is the way to go. Oh my gosh, parents, you could trick your kids into eating so much vegetables. <laughs> Did you like, while I wasn't looking, put something else in here? No, Aper. No, Aper. Everything I put here was, is, is recorded. <laughs> it's not that I could cheat, it's recorded. Okay, one more. Who am I kidding? This is gonna be gone. I know I've said it before, but the next time we're in Italy, we need to go to Sardinia. Speaking of Italy, if you'd like to meet us there, we have a brand new Italian food tour. It's called The Taste of Calabria. We'll put a link down in the description below. Go check it out. Before we go, a quick shout out to a pasta grammarian in action. Lolly Eats on Instagram made this beautiful looking tiramisu. Why they didn't send us a piece? It looks amazing. <laughs> Thanks for trying the recipe. It looks fantastic. If you want to become a pasta grammarian, just hit that subscribe button. Follow us on social media and definitely tag us in a picture over there if you try any of the recipes. Try the vegetable bread thing from Sardinia. Try, try all of them. Try all the, but try the vegetable one. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Ciao. Um, don't look at me. I'm not going to give you this. Huh? Even if I give you my Bambi eyes? <laughs> Worst happened. Prego.